you're on air with Douglas, where fans are connected to their favorite celebrities. And now, here's your host, Douglas. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. This is On Air with Douglas. I'm your host, Doug. It's December 10th. And uh, I'm not even going to waste any time because we have daytime award winning and butt pincher Jeannie Cooper with us today. Jeannie, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, my dear. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for asking. Oh, thank you. I was re- I was re- rereading the book over the weekend to your your book, Not Young, Still Restless, and I, I had a chuckle at the butt pincher uh, <laughs> stuff you talked about. <laughs> so have well, you had a chance? Have you had a chance to tackle these new? Have you had a chance to tackle these new guys that are on the show now? <laughs> yep. Well, now I haven't been in that many scenes with the new kids. Um, however, when I am, I'll think of something. That's for sure. But uh, <laughs> you know, it's amazing the um, the young group that um, you know we we had, who are all getting older. I might say, as everybody lives another day, the other day older, but. Um, what um what a joy what what a joy to 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 work with uh watch watch them grow have fun with them and i think mainly teach them that yes you work very very hard but if you do not have fun doing it you're in the wrong the wrong wrong profession you've got to have fun with what you're doing i don't care how dramatic it is how um uh, shocking it may be or just fun, fun, you've got to be able to see the enjoyment. The audience has got to see that you're enjoying what you're doing, whether it's drama, comedy, or what have you. And I think I I hold to that a great deal in in life itself, Doug. I sort of live by those rules. Well, that's good. And and, uh, you were just talking before the show that you just got done with the workout. So, I mean, that's great that you're still working out and working hard. (laughs) Yeah. Listen, it's like, <laughs> I'm not kidding when you called. I said, Doug, Doug, who? <laughs> and I almost forgot about the interview. I was so tired. My my training was pushing me a little bit into another level uh, this morning. And mm-hmm. the fact that I am I can stand up and talk is a plus. You just need Esther to go get you some tea now. Oh, please, leave it up to Esther. I'd have fainted and been shit and never known that I passed away. <laughs> poor Esther. Poor that yeah, she'd poor. Fall, I swear to God, she'd fallen down the first manhole if she ever got out on the sidewalk. <laughs> poor dear darling. Here's, here's Mrs. Chancellor's safe. This is where she keeps all of her jewels. Good, I'll shoot her. I'll shoot her husband. Yeah, yeah. Nobody realizes that Esther's husband shot my Rex. I and know. why I have her still in my employee, I shall never know. I, I personally know. would have. <laughs> yeah, well, now Except you have how... a husband, husband Murphy, and we don't ever see him. We're, He's always fishing. I was going to ask you, have you seen him? I mean, if you do, <laughs> tell him to call home. We've been worried about him. <laughs> okay, I, I I know. I kind of missed him. Uh, what is it like? What is it like working with uh, with Michael? Oh, Michael is a is a dream. He is just a dream. He's a very fine actor, you know, and yeah. uh, of course, you know. We make great fun because when he makes his appearances, he's always flipping hot dogs and and hamburgers for a barbecue, <laughs> or he's cutting ice holes in, in some lake <laughs> and fishing. Uh, and I I do I do believe he must have had a life before he met me. I'd love to know what it was. <laughs> but uh, um, if you do see him up that way, why uh, please? Uh, Tell him to phone home. We're all sort of worried about him. We'd like to know yeah, where he's been. Exactly. And it's sort of funny. Um, well, congratulations on the huge success of your book, Not Young, Still Restless. Uh, How did you come about that title? Um, well, actually, um, Amy of uh, Harper Collins, the publishing company, um, and Lindsay and I threw around, wanted something involved of not being young and, and still being restless and so on and so forth without being a copy copycat uh, a soap opera kind of thing and uh, mm-hmm. uh and uh, actually Amy uh, put it together correctly and we came up with uh, you know not young so restless which i think uh is a good is is a good flash title for people as they get older if they mm-hmm. can still want to do still want to explore still be curious about a lot of things 
uh, I, just because I mean you do not have to be you know uh, uh, picket fences and, and um, rice pudding. You don't have to be that. You don't have to be that. Uh, yeah. Find a find a passion. Find something that excites you. I don't care if it's growing a tomato plant, anything. But uh, most people reach a certain age, and um, marketing says you're either supposed to die, be impaired, or or <laughs> or, or be a, a president of the United States. I don't know. It's just it is so so strange how uh, you know that wonderful the first time someone called you sir. What was your reaction? <laughs> oh well, I was like, well, I'm 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 only thirty eight. <laughs> Have you been called sir by a, oh, say yeah. a younger younger kid yeah. say uh, 15 years, 16 years old? Yep. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean sir? I'm not I, <laughs> Yeah. It's yeah, a strange just, feeling, I'm, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, um I I read the book when it first came out and then I read it again over the weekend. And how are you did you keep a, a journal all your life? How did you string together all of this information? Uh, how did you remember all of this? I, I tell, well, wow, listen, at 84, I can still remember when I was three years old and two years old. Uh, oh, well. There's just a lot of things that, that you know, are highlights in, in your life, good, bad, or indifferent. And, um, of course, I was never, ever going to write a book. And everybody kept screaming, even the kids on the show, saying, my God, when are you going to write a book? When you're going to? Because you start telling them things, and, of course, they have no idea who you're talking about because they weren't born then. Yeah. And... Uh, so then they become stories that you're telling. And yeah. finally, uh, Lindsay Harrison, who co-authored, and uh, she said, Gene, you've got to, you just have to do it. And every time I turned around, when are you going to write a book? When are you going to write a book? Everybody. So basically I said, okay, I will write a book. I did, and now you can all shut up. You don't have to ask me when you're going to write yeah. a book. And as you start, you know, uh, and Lindsay said, okay, this is what happens, Gene. I'll make it easy for you. Get your time, you record, your, and I have it, and she has one, and we, you know, change, uh, uh, you know, you fill up the tape and send it to her, or she comes over the house and gets it, and then you come over the house and you have sessions and that sort of thing. And she said, just just start out on that tape of your name, blah, 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 blah. I said, okay. And I'm sitting it's around the house, and I said, oh, okay. I, one morning I flicked it on, and I said, hello, my name is Jean Cooper. I was born in Taft, California. I flicked it off. I never did anything for three weeks after that. And then I got to think, well, uh, okay, I was boring. A lot of things happened. So what you try and do is pick out parts that people can relate to, mm-hmm. you know. And then, of course, maybe some of the things they can't relate to at all, but it it, it involves them. They become interested. And I think the one thing about the book that really is my reward is that people who have never watched the show have bought the book mm-hmm. and uh because it isn't about soap opera because life is a soap opera yeah and uh, it uh it touches upon a few players but it's basically my life where it led it led me to that mm-hmm. and um gave me the outcome of what I do and and um uh, charity charity wise and I think basically is trying to give back uh, to to the goodness that has happened to me and taking mm-hmm. care of the planet that we live on, I, which I've done since I was a child. That's from my yeah. parents. You know, they, uh, yeah. I guess that's the Indian blood that they you yeah. know, um, really um, push forward the fact that you have to take care of the earth because it yeah. takes care of you. And uh, so most of the things in it, um, well, all of it actually, because I, I just, uh oh. Oh, isn't that marvelous? The dogs are going to greet the gardener. He's been here for ten years. You think he just they just saw him for the first time. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, oh no. No, that's my hairdresser makeup person. I we're taking cast pictures today. That's what oh. we're doing. Oh good. Wait till the gardeners get here, they'll really raise the ruckus. But uh, <laughs> um you, when you when you were 16, you sadly lost your your mom. And uh, what was a what did what did you uh, learn from her going forward to to uh, to make Jeannie Cooper the best she can be? And what does she what would she think of Catherine and your career? Um, 
Well, uh, I I think Mother uh, knew uh, some people like Catherine in her day. I know my Aunt Della certainly did because Aunt Della was here in Los Angeles, and we were all over the place. But uh, uh, Mother encouraged me to to uh, because early on I I I stopped wanting to be a nurse and then wanting to be in uh, you know on stage once you get that first reaction from an audience. And if it grabs you, then all of a sudden it's like an addiction. Mm-hmm. And um, and she encouraged me, but she encouraged me not to, uh, you know, she encouraged me to stay grounded. Um, you know, you're never bigger than than uh, what you really are, which does away with a lot of false egos. And uh, but and, uh, stand up for yourself. And um, you're out there in a, in a world that uh, men are pretty dominant. And uh, you don't have to give in to the forces, but uh, you can understand why they are like they are at times, things like this. And um, basically, it's, uh, it uh, becomes successful. If you don't get back, then the well runs dry. Yeah. And it's really quite true. Yeah. You have to. Uh, why? Why Why wouldn't I, you know? Exactly. Then well, you, la- you later went on to have three kids. You had uh, two boys, and you finally had your girl, Karen. Uh, oh, God, are yes. <laughs> how oh, are yes. they doing? Oh, they're doing fantastic. Corbin, of course, is is, uh, is, is an actor, which I'm sure he, he basically started out as Arnie Becker on L.A. Law, which so many people remember, yes. and um, Major League of the, uh, movies. He's done tons of movies. He's... Uh, uh, doing psych at, the, at, at this particular moment. And um, uh, he writes, directs, and produces what we call cottage films, which uh, is all about family. In fact, I just yeah. went to a um, preview of one, uh, what was it, Saturday, I guess it was, the new one called A Three-Day um, Test. Mm-hmm. And it was it, it's all about family. It's four families, and, and, it, and they're good. They're very, very good. I think they... Uh, they go straight to DVD, probably, I think, I guess it's a, a Target, Walmart, things like that. And yeah. so where you, um, Sony, I guess, plays them. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, and my other son is, is an artist, and also uh, he uh, designs homes, builds homes. And my daughter, Karen, runs um, uh, Pacific Studios, which is the backdrop. They make all the backdrops for it. most of it's far people send from all over the place for the backdrops or they will have them made you know have uh, which their studio photographs the backdrops and you know when you're looking out the window you see the traffic and the stores and things and what have you all in backdrops that's what her her studio produces and yeah. um, for Spielberg for everybody yeah so uh, every great. everyone is well thank god well that's great to hear well, now moving into to Genoa City, uh, one of the thorns in Catherine's side for the, the whole itiner- itinerary of the show has been Jill, uh, you know, played by Brenda <laughs> and then later uh, Jess. Uh, what is it about Jill and Kay that fans have just loved for, you know, the, the last three decades? Well, I think, I think what they love about that is that they've, they, they, almost every woman has, has that other friend they're close to, but there are moments that there's there, there's such a, a a jealousy or delight, a dislike moment of that friend, you know, uh, because as they say, no one is perfect, and certainly not your best friend. And, uh, I think that's what everyone identifies with, because they know it's going to lead to bloodshed, or they're going to straighten it out and pick up another problem. And uh, and it's grown up. It's not uh, a forced issue of two, you know, seventh graders having a problem. It's um, it's a real life kind of thing that happens, and uh, consequently, uh, they identify with it. One, it is amusing because they know it's a love hate. That the other two have the two women have great love for one another, great respect for one another. And um, they just put out their own personal dislikes and, and throw it at each other like darts. And they know how to get under one another's skins. And um, it's it's one of those close, close things. You have a very, very, very close friend 
there's certain little things that bug you, but however, the friendship is greater than whatever the problem is that you're facing with um, whatever little thing you may not like about that person. Or it isn't that you don't like it, it's just it's um, it's irritating. <laughs> we irritate one another to the point of, of physical physicality at times. Yes. We uh, go that yes. step farther than most women, than most women would love to, but don't. You know. Exactly. It, it kind of reminds me of the days, you know, also when, uh, you know, in, in prime time on Dynasty, where Joan, yeah. Joan Collins would be thrown in the pool, and and it, it, people like good cat fights, and, and I don't, see, we don't see very many of those in Young and Restless in recent no, years. No, you don't. No, no, not yeah. if Jill and I aren't doing it. It's it's really not fun. I mean, you, yeah. and you don't see a lot of that on on daytime TV. But, yeah, uh, and, and I miss that campiness and that fun. I mean, like the time you guys were in the attic and you guys had that oh, big yeah. fight. <laughs> that was a lot. That was so much fun. And then, you know, re- just recently, I think the last cast fight was with the cake um, at the wedding uh, when you guys got to the cake fight. Oh, right. Absolutely. There. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah, um, that's, uh, it's always such, such a delight because basically uh, one or the other of us do something like that at the least expected moment. When the audience says, oh, oh, they're going to get into it here, it doesn't happen. It's when the audience sits back and they think they're safe and all of a sudden the other one springs on the other. So, oh, yeah, that's that's, uh, – Jess and I have such fun with that. I can't tell you that's been a specialty. We we picked that out. And um, the press, uh, the press loves it. Uh, They they love to write about because they write about something funny rather than – Everybody marrying your brother and sister or their father and mother. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now fans were fans were pretty shocked when we uh, when we found out that originally Jill ended up being your daughter, and then later we found out that Tucker ended up being a child that Catherine gave away. When you found out that they were going to write Jill in as your your daughter after all these years, what what did you what was your take on that? <laughs> I said. Come on, guys. This is a halfway intelligent person, Tucker. I can Im- I can imagine. I can imagine that Tucker. Uh, yes, because I knew that I gave him away under dire circumstances. I don't mm-hmm. say gave him away, but basically I did. Um, yeah. But because it was a situation, and she was young, and what blah 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 that goes with it. Uh, finding out that Jess was my daughter, I think we both fell backwards. We yeah. <laughs> fell backwards and read, and of course later we found that she wasn't, because yeah. it doesn't work then. It, we couldn't have the fun that we were having. We couldn't have the um, uh, altercations and that sort of thing. We couldn't do that if, you know, if they were mother daughter. It just uh, it would, you know, as a whole different uh, connotation of, of relationship. If we would fight and quarrel and hit one another, that sort of thing, it wouldn't work. And um, and I really didn't want I really didn't want to, um, the mother the mother daughter thing because it gives us less to do without offending yeah. some mothers and daughters you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah exactly I, I, we do what some mothers would love to do <laughs> <a> daughter <laughs> and vice versa <laughs> yeah. many times I'd like to have taken mine and put her head right through a wall but uh, <laughs> fortunately they say grow up and pass that before you do it. <laughs> <laughs> but oh my God, is it? <laughs> I will raise three boys, and they can all have problems. And one girl, I, girls are the most difficult things to read and to to rear you ever in your lifetime. It yeah. is amazing. It is amazing. And my daughter has two girls, and I said it serves you right. Now you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and she's asking me, she's asking me questions and asking for some kind of a of a of a a conclusion to whatever problem they're going to have. And I said, I have the faintest idea. I never solved yours. How would you expect me to solve this? <laughs> That's up to you. They're your daughters, dear. <laughs> oh, God, it's amazing. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's, I think um, uh, Carol Burnett came up with the greatest thing in the world when she said, with daughter boys, you know, they're sort of okay after 16. The girls, you want to give them a shot when they're 13 and they wake up when they're 21. <laughs> and, uh, That's great. And you don't have to go through anything other than exactly. just appreciate it. It's yeah. amazing. Uh, so, in your opinion, who's uh, been the love of Kay's life? Philip, Rex, Murphy, or you haven't found 
found that love yet. Uh, I, I think I think Rex is uh, is is the love is the love of her life. Well, the love of her life is no, you know, was Felipe that she, you know, when she got drunk and jumped overboard, wanted to commit suicide, and he picked her up out of the waters and took her into yeah. the jungle, and and yeah. just meant what? Um, five minutes. It's interview. It's my my makeup and hairstylist is here. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing an interview. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Okay. See, listen. You'd be surprised between the gardener and the FedEx. <laughs> That's this house. Thank God I thank God I do workouts in the morning. <laughs> oh God, I tell you, I I used to think you know some people, but on the other hand, if this house wasn't sort of like a railroad station at times, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's all life bubbling about you. Well, that's good. It keeps you on your toes. Yes, it um, does. Well, they sh- they shocked everybody when they brought uh, Tom Beards back as Philip the um, Third, and he came back from the dead and, and gay. And then they sent him packing back to Australia. What, what do you what do you think of what happened well, there? Because Why, I, 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 I I don't well since um, Tom himself was you know such a once he he came out uh, uh, he wanted so much to do gay stories and and. and uh, and of course, they had no place for it at that time. I, I don't think they do now. But um, uh, that's sort of sad because the thing is, I think he, I think he could be a very interesting part mm-hmm. of um, of the Genoa City Tapestry right now. Yeah. And um, you know, um, the fact that that he would be gay or is gay has nothing to do with what he would do. Well, oh, I'm sorry, what? That's my literary agent. Tell her I'm on the phone doing an interview. I'm trying. To get... <laughs> tell, tell, tell her I, tell her I will call her or have her call me. When? How long are we doing this? How long are we, we got? This we, we got. Ten, we got ten more minutes. We got. It, tell her to call me in fifteen minutes. All right. Okay. Uh, my literary agent. <laughs> <laughs> You're a busy, busy lady. Oh, Doug, listen. It's only Monday morning. What you get a Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so how did Duchess come around? Brock always called you Duchess. How where did that um, term come from? Uh, I think one of the writers um, I, I, I said, reminded reminded them of, of of how a Duchess would act because Catherine doesn't exactly act like a queen or the president's first lady, but sort of like the Duchess, a, a Duchess. Um, in royalty was the one who looked after, um, you know, the estates and all of that and what have you, and dealt with all the working class of people on her estates and things like that. She was more of a, of a, um, of um, I don't know what you would I want to say caretaker, but not, uh, not really. She just, she kept things running smoothly. The Duchess could have a personality. The Duchess could be a fiery person. Could have emotions, show emotions, and um, dislike and uh, likes and that sort of thing. She didn't have to be royal about that sort of thing and hold her place. So uh, I, one of the writers, I think it was Elizabeth Hare or, or Kay Holden, I don't remember which, put that in and um, as though that's what he called me was Duchess. And that's all he usually calls me is Duchess. You know, every yeah. once in a while they'll say, they have him say mother, but he really prefers Duchess. I do too. I like it very much. Yeah, I know. Really it's it's too true. It suits Catherine definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, uh, it, it's sort Bell, of a. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying it's sort of a Maggie Smith tag yeah. of, of sort of thing, you know. Exactly. In terms of what she would be. Who exactly. I happen to live, my very favorite actress of all time. Oh, she is yeah. phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. I watch oh. everything that she's in. Oh, I swear. I swear. Absolutely. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. Incredible um, woman. Bill Bell was is the is the, the grandfather of or and the father of, of daytime. He he created and you know, these two soaps and worked on other soaps as well. Um and you know, he's sadly no longer with us. What did what did you learn? I'm sure you learned a lot, but what's something that you learned from Bill Bell when we while working with him for all those years? Well, Bill, um, 
Bill Bell uh, taught you that you may be, if you're creating a character, maybe you personally would say, no, that's not right, but according to that character, it is right for that character. And, of course, this is where it goes back to basic acting. After all, you're, you're... you're creating another person. You're not creating yourself all over again, although you're putting some of what you know into it, uh, is uh, that you never... The star of any show is the show. Mm-hmm. If you haven't got a show, you're going to have all the name in the world, and if it's a bust, I mean, it's called you're in a, you know, a flop. Yeah. And um, and that's been my belief, too, is that Wynar is the star. The show is the star, and then... Uh, we're all we're simply decorations on 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 the tree. That's what we yeah. are. We're decorations. And if yeah. the show uh, show falls uh, below its expectations, uh, no matter how greatly we shine, it's so much a pretty tree, but it doesn't make it the best tree, you know. Yeah. And uh, that that's what what you're learning in life. Uh, you're you're not any more important than you know the other inhabitants. On the planet, yeah. you know. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. That's that, that's a great metaphor. No, oh, absolutely. My, my mother is stuck to that, you know, when she says you are simply a human being on this planet. You know, if an elephant yeah. could talk and tell you what they think about themselves, why they would tell you where you belong. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, I, that's well, contribution I and and and, yeah. and appreciation. Exactly. Well, I couldn't have the chance to talk to you and not, and not bring up Marge. Marge was my favorite oh. character of all time yeah. uh, that, it, that you, you 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 played when that when that all rolled out in the in the nineties. It you, it was so much fun, and I bet it was oh, fun to play too. Wasn't it though? Wasn't it though? I loved yeah. it. God, I loved it. It, uh, it gave you a chance. It gave you a chance to just go wild with the character, mm-hmm. and uh, and. Uh, it was such a great, it was hard work being her and being Catherine and then being myself, feeding into them and then putting into what the writers wanted at the same time. Mm-hmm. But Marge was such a a free, <laughs> a free <laughs> spirit and yeah. just such a free spirit. And it was divine to play her, you know. She's the kind yeah. who would pick up a knife at a restaurant to see her if her lipstick's on, you know, <laughs> exactly. reflection in the blade, that, that sort of thing. She would be the kind that, that belches and doesn't burp at the yeah. most, you know, inappropriate times. And uh, it just, uh, I think I think Marge represented to so many people that same kind of freedom that, that everybody sort of wishes for themselves at the time, you know, yeah. that they just could say and do anything and feel comfortable doing it. You know, yeah. Without really I, wrecking anybody. I still You're, have memories. Uh, I still have memories uh, looking back because I've watched the show. Uh, I'm 38, and I probably watched it about 30 years. And I and I so I go back, you know, pretty much the whole show. And I still have memories of when uh, Marge, as Catherine, was practicing the handwriting and then practicing the voice in the mirror. <laughs> and then and then when Marge, Marge as Kay, was in bed with Rex, I was like, how does Rex not know that that's not Catherine. I mean, there's got to be a body <laughs> mark. There's got to be some kind of, you know, surgery mark or That's something. That's crazy. To... <laughs> Don't forget, I had to have my appendix removed too. <laughs> it, yes, exactly. <laughs> but, oh, uh, of course. That, that's the one thing that I asked. I, I said, now look, come on. <laughs> Rex is, a, you know, Catherine loves him because, you know, he's a bright man. And mm-hmm. uh, come on now, don't tell me that 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 Marge had Catherine down so pat that he couldn't tell the difference. But, however, there's some dramatic license that that they took. And uh, yeah. that was good because I think everybody asked that question, but they didn't care. Eventually, they didn't care. Yeah, I mean, it's all about <laughs> storytelling, but it was, it was yeah, a lot right. of money. And then, and then, you know, 20 years later, you got to revisit Marge and bring Marge back, and uh, then we, we lost her, uh, sadly. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't want them to do that. With her, yeah. but then for the sake of a story, um, you know, it, it was one of the things they had to do. I don't think Bill Bell would have ever killed her off, though. Yeah. I think there would have been another solution to whatever was happening. Yeah. I don't think Bill would have ever killed her off. And, but um, what fun. You know, 
Yeah. And, and growing up in the 80s, watching uh, you, uh, Catherine and Jill, uh, Brent, Brenda, uh, you know, originated uh, the Brenda role. Dixon. Um, yeah. Bre- yeah, she she originated the role. And she, was, she, she and Jess um, have played the role, but they played them differently. And Jess, I mean, totally. uh, Brenda, Brenda was so, like, flamboyant and had big old shoulder pads and wild oh, colors. Oh, yeah. And and, oh, wild, and crazy was, one. She was such a she was a real royal bitch, and then and oh Jess, yeah, yeah. She, uh, she used her body to get anything she wanted if she had to, exactly. you know. Exactly, even and, your husband. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that situation. And, uh, oh yeah. Well, that yeah. started the whole thing, having a child by my husband, which yeah, brings exactly. along Tom Beards, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but oh yeah, but you, that's um, and then. Je- Je- and then Jess-, Jess has brought a different uh, part of Jill, who's still wonderful. She's yeah, she brought actress. a little more sane Jill. Jill, yeah. uh, Jill uh, was uh, Brenda, the way Brenda played her. She was just freewheeling. She was free-spirited in what she went after she got. And, um, yeah. you know, uh, did, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it, it uh, hurt feelings all the way around a lot of people, what have you, but Jill didn't care because that's yeah. what Jill wanted, and Jill got it that way. And yeah. got it anyway she could. And, uh, you know, it would be like trying to compare Terry Lester to Peter Bergman in mm-hmm. the book, of which which I uh, explained that, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Peter sure. is just absolutely divine. And what a, what a wow of an actor. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, meantime, Terry Lester was, was brilliant in this and an entirely different interpretation. Mm-hmm. And Brenda was an entirely different interpretation. Than what yeah. uh, Jess gave uh, gave the part, you know. Yeah. So. Well, you get, you gave us a scare last year when Michael Lerner uh, stepped in and played you. Uh, I know. We, we were very worried about you, and I'm glad that you're doing better. But let me say that Michael did an amazing job, though. Yes, yeah, didn't she though? Didn't yes. I? I told her I just you know God bless her. She you sent a note to me, and she said, "I know I can never fill your shoes, but I'll try and keep your spirit alive." And yeah. she did just that and more. So, no, I mean, Michael is such an accomplished actress, and I'm very, very grateful. But I had double pneumonia, and I want yeah. to tell you, that's the third time I had it, and it almost did me in that time. Oh, it's well, taken a got, long time to recover from it. Oh, bless your heart. you got you got to keep on going because, you know, God needs to keep you with us for as many, many more years <laughs> to come because we need Catherine. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> We just, over in Bold and the Beautiful, we just lost uh, the character of Stephanie Forrester. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, the, the thought comes to me often that Kay is not going to be able to live forever, and I, we want her to live forever. And the thought, the, the tears will just stream for everyone when that day uh. does come. Um, but also on that role, on that show, they, um, you know, the, the beautiful and talented uh, Darlene Connolly, who played uh, oh, uh, yes. Sally oh, Spectra, yeah, good friend of mine. She, she passed away, but she they kept her character alive off screen for all these years. So, oh yeah, so, uh, yeah. In, in yeah. the unfortunate end of uh, Kay, well, hopefully they, uh, they they keep the spirits alive. But for now, you got to keep working out so you can stay yeah. strong and, <laughs> and keep visiting and keep coming to uh, keep, to keep having keep, keep having a madhouse around me. Exactly, <laughs> it's too much before, to do to retire. Yeah. Before we wrap up, uh, I just want to: uh, Are you optimistic about what Young Russell's future with now Jill uh, and Josh uh, at the helm? Are you, is there any, uh, no, I, I actually, I, uh, I, I'm quite, uh, uh, I'm quite satisfied at, at this time because they're mm-hmm. just sort of dusting it off a little bit, shining it up a little bit, and mm-hmm. uh, story-wise, you've got Josh, Josh uh, uh, Griffith, who is is such a fine, fine writer, and mm-hmm. uh, if he keeps writers around him. Uh, that are just as good, or you know, at least uh, come up to his table. Uh, I I have very very good hopes for the show, and uh, of course you're going to be introducing new younger characters, but um, I mean that's life. I mean we all get another year older, and you've got to say <laughs> we can't have we we can't have all the boys playing 20 years old when they're 40. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you- so yeah, that's the introduction of so many new characters because yeah. they have a longevity and their audience is building. So yeah. that's good. And, and the audience with the core characters, we still maintain that one, and uh, yeah. and that's good news. So yeah. I I'm, I'm, I have great faith in, in Jill and Josh both. 
Yeah. Well, Catherine's been through so much in the you know the 40 years that the show's been on the air. And uh, is there something you'd like to see Kay uh, get involved with that she hasn't? Oh, I wanted her to get involved with politics, but then I, I don't think that's a good idea at this point. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good. That would have uh, well, been yeah, good. I, I really did. I really wanted her to run for governor or some damn thing, you know, that yeah. that would uh, – I, I, but on the other hand, um, I, I don't think that she would have been faced with, with storylines that I got to have if I had gone on, on another storyline. I don't know. Uh, yeah. But somehow they just didn't feel that that's what Catherine would do. I could stand behind somebody and make them governor or something like that. That I could do. Yeah. And um, But anyway, that was that was a, a good, good thought. My one thing that I really want to happen is I, I, I want them to bring the character of Felipe, who saved me years mm-hmm. and years ago when I jumped ship and we went yeah. into the jungles. I would love to have him come through Genoa City as this very wealthy, accomplished uh, um, Latino man and mm-hmm. just happened to stop and to say just wanted to say hello and, and Felipe and Catherine you know uh, uh, could recall old times you do some flashbacks things like that yeah. that'd be fun yeah, yeah. Well, well you know Murphy's never home so I mean you can play with anybody <laughs> oh my okay yes uh, okay I am I know I know I know uh, you're right okay. <laughs> <laughs> well I, I'm, I'm I, talking I, to my I'm talking, talking to my my hairstylist Oh, okay. Well, we'll because he said we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap we have, up. But we have the cast picture, a new one for the first time in ten years. So you know. Oh wow! Great. What can I tell you? I, I can't <laughs> wait to see that. There's a lot of changes yeah, in that cast. Thank God. <laughs> well, listen, I'll let you, I will let you go, but I would love. To, um, usually, I take phone calls uh, from fans, but since we ran out of time, um, I would love to have you back in the spring and, and connect you with some of your fans, if that'd be okay. You know what? I'd love that. Oh, Doug, I really would love that. Okay. okay? Uh, all right. Well, I will uh, touch base with uh, the people that set this up with us, and we'll get uh, get you back in a couple months uh, to do all right. phone calls. Okay. Okay. We do phone calls. Abs- I love that. I love that sort of oh. thing. Anyway. Okay, right, my friend. Right. Well, it was Thank lovely you so talking much. to you. Thank you so much for having me. And no um, I'll see you. Um, I'll see you after the first of the year. All right. Or perfect. talk Thank to you. you some- yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank. Bye, bye, Jean. Bye, bye, Doug. Thank you so much. You're Bye-bye. welcome. All right, everybody. I'm sorry for those who were on hold that wanted to talk to her. We were only scheduled for a half hour, and, uh, you know, she was quite a talker, so I wanted to let her, you know, talk. So we're going to schedule a half-hour chat fest, um, you know, maybe January or February. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, But, you know, as you can tell, she was very busy with uh, getting prepped for the cast photo for The Young and Restless. So um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and uh, be sure to visit the website on airwithdouglas.com. Um, I didn't have a chance to run my promo, so I'll run my promo now. For all the latest entertainment news, show schedule, and archive shows, check out onairwithdouglas.com. And would you like to be a guest co-host with Douglas? Just help book a guest, and you can spend the hour with the guest. Contact onairwithdouglas at gmail.com for more. Today's show is sponsored by SoapStyle.com, where you can get all the latest fashion trends from daytimes to bold and the beautiful. For more information, go to SoapStyle.com. Now back to the show. Again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Uh, the show will be featured tomorrow on Blog Talk Radio. So for all of you uh, that are listening to uh, to the show, that are new to the show, be sure to check out my website for over 120 past shows and our upcoming shows that we have. Um, tomorrow, which will be Tuesday, I have Jason Castro, which is uh, he's from uh, American Idol alumni. Uh, Wednesday, I have actor Victor Alfuri. Uh, Thursday, I have China Phillips from Wilson Phillips. And Friday, I have the author of Born This Way, Real Stories of Growing Up Gay. So i got a full schedule this week. So um, with that being said, thanks, everybody. I appreciate your support. And um, we'll, I'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening to tonight's show. Be sure to check out onairwithdouglas.com for upcoming shows with guests such as Daytime's Jeannie Cooper, Wilson Phillips' very own Chiana Phillips, American Idol alumni Jason Castro, General Hospital's Ian Buchanan, and much more. Don't forget to tune in to our one-year anniversary show on January 3rd. Are you on Twitter? Follow the show at onairwithdoug.